Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I wanted to remind, take a brief moment to remind everybody about my stupid logo. Um, <laughs> that logo, for those of you that don't know, is coffee beans, cinnamon sticks, and big boy pants. And what this is all from is I've, I've referenced myself drinking cinnamon in my coffee and back during the 2018-19 crypto winter, I had to take pause and tell everybody that they need to put, needed to put their big boy or big girl pants on, whatever the case may be. Because what happened back then and what I'm seeing now is, and it, it, it's just the way people are, people, when people get negative, the market doesn't do anything for a while and all that stuff, it, it's, it's a repeated pattern. They start... Uh, start getting depressed and all that, then they start attacking people, then they, I mean, it's like the same old stuff. Now, if it was just, you know, average people out there, that'd be one thing. But it, it, it's also, it also applies to, um, to people who should be more responsible and know better, people that are, um, a lot of them, sometimes it's influencers that, that do it and start attacking people, but it's people with big followings. But what I say to everybody is put your big boy pants on. We're adults here. We're not sitting around crying about all this stuff. If you understand what you hold, you're not staring at green candles every day. That is not, that is never, I've been here since 2013. I can tell you firsthand, I've been through all the ups and downs, but I know exactly what I hold. I'm excited for what I know is coming because I, I know what I hold. I know exactly what I hold. Now let me let me show you for while the Bitcoin and the Ethereum maxis and all are, are staring at um, whatever the charts are and all that stuff. And that's fun to do. I show you what people think about that. But I'm much more of a big picture guy. I mean, I'm 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 looking at the one to 200 year world change, the change in the entire financial system that's going on right in front of our eyes. I'm excited because we are in, we, you won't see the kind of times we're in for another hundred, you'll never see them in your lifetime. This is a once every 100 or 200 year thing that we're, we're involved in. And, and it's kind of like expected in my eyes that something like that doesn't happen overnight. But I think it, we're, it's in the midst of happening right now. So watch this. This is we've been talking about the BRICS. This is going on right now. Earlier on Friday, Prime Minister Modi held a telephonic conversation with Iranian President Ebrahim Raisi. The two leaders spoke extensively on bilateral issues, including the future of the Chabahar port, expansion of BRICS, and an upcoming meeting between them on the sidelines of the summit. Prime Minister Modi might also meet with his Bangladeshi counterpart, Sheikh Hasina. Okay, so you got the BRICS stuff going on. I want to remind everyone, this is for all the marbles, folks. This is not, um, th this is, I was told a long time ago, this, this XRP, this stuff was created, not just XRP, I believe governments. I believe governments created Bitcoin. I believe governments are involved in, a, there's no question, Ethereum. We don't know the extent of, of all of it, but what we do know is that this is all about the changeover of the financial system, uh, 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 the greatest wealth transfer in the history of the world. I believe that the United States knows that they're about to fold up their old financial system and fold it into the new system. And the people that know what's coming are gonna get to participate. This is what it's all about. I've played this video before. I'm going to play it again because you need to understand. This is what we're living through right now. This right here. And I don't care what it is. All these weird things that have happened the last five years. It all has to do with this right here. The standard of living of all Americans can be traced back to here. The vast oil rich deserts of Saudi Arabia. In the early 70s, after the Arab crisis happened with the oil embargoes, OPEC basically... 
this is everything. This is why this is why you've seen Brad Garlinghouse meeting with Chris or the IMF. This is why you see Brad Garlinghouse in Switzerland. This is why you see um, the thing going on over there in the Ukraine. This is everything. Everything you're watching, I would even go so far as to say this is why we, this world spent a year and a half in masks. It tripled the price of oil to the Western world. And at that time, America realized that they were vulnerable because they were importing about 70% of all the oil they consumed. This is why you've been watching prototypes going on in cryptocurrency for the last 10 plus years. You're a reliable foreign source of oil. U.S. President Richard Nixon sent his Secretary of State and National Security Advisor Henry Kissinger to Saudi Arabia for a secret meeting. The result was a pact that still stands to this day. If Saudi Arabia, which at the time was the world's largest producer of oil, would sell the oil in U.S. This is why you're seeing such a ferocious fight between in politics right now. This is why for the first time in, the, in history, you're seeing people trying to put ex-presidents in jail. This is everything. America would defend Saudi Arabia and make sure the House of Saud would stay in power. As a direct result of this U.S.-Saudi agreement, all other oil-producing nations also adopted the dollar as the de facto medium of exchange. Demand for it increased exponentially. This is why Ripple was sued. This is why you're seeing an, a, a b battle between good and evil in the digital, and you're having digital currency wars. This is why Gary Gensler was sent. This is why he was at MIT and pretended to be pro this stuff and now he's against it. This is why you have guys from islands that are in play in all of this. All over the world and soon it had a new Got name, the, the petrodollar. Your currency is only as strong as the demand for it, just like anything else, the supply and demand. Why the petrodollar is important, it causes a demand for the US dollar. A lot of Americans don't realize that over 70% of all the hundred dollar bills in the this is why central banks are buying gold in record levels this is why you see gold in almost every conversation online when it comes to money right now world are actually outside of the u.s there's more hundred dollar bills in russia than there are in america this stockpile of u.s dollars in countries around the world is because oil is bought and sold using the greenback if oil starts trading in non-petro dollars such as gold or a basket of currencies or if china and russia start trading in yuan and ruble rather than u.s dollars that demand isn't there and the way of life for the average american will be done it will be worse than the i would even go so far as to say this is why elon musk is now running um x and you have spacex and we're talking about intergalactic currencies it's all about the petrodollar and preventing World War III and always has been. This is not about doggy coins that, that go up a lot in a day and stupid stuff like that. This is not about getting depressed because the price of something hasn't moved and, and you wanted it to happen faster. This is for all the freaking marbles, all of them. And I believe XRP and gold are, are gonna be an inter integral part of all those marbles. And I believe that li lives are going to completely change and dynasties will be made. And I plan on being one of those dynasties, <laughs> be honest with you. I did not show up in 2013 after having been a financial advisor, not one now, but having been a financial advisor at Morgan Stanley back, when, uh, back in the early 2000s, I didn't just show up here because oh that looks like that looks like a new interesting investment i showed up here because i thought that this i literally looked at my wife in 2013 i put i don't remember what it was how much money it was it wasn't a ton of money but i, I looked at her and i said if i'm right about what this thing is we're either going to lose all of this money or we're going to get filthy rich and i still tell her the exact same thing but now it's different I just tell her, I think we're going to get filthy rich now. Okay, sorry to go on a rant. Um, 
I'm not going to go through this. Dark Defender's doing some charts today. It looks like he's saying, yes, 31 times. $3 to $6.50, whatever. The, I show these to you every once in a while because some people like to look at this stuff. But like I just told you in my rant, this is, this is a much bigger picture. That doesn't mean that some of these guys are not right in their short-term or mid-term charting. But I think all bets are off when this thing really goes off. James Philan breaking the SEC has filed its motion to certify interlocutory appeal. Um, then uh, crypto law, John Deaton's law firm says the SEC is not appealing the fact that XRP token is not a security. Here it is in black and white from their brief today. And the SEC does not seek appellate review of any holding relating to the fact that the underlying assets here are nothing but computer code and do and, and with no inherent value. Now I asked John Deaton because Charles Gasparino made this comment. He says, and one other thing, if there was any case, what did he say here? Uh, if there was any case in the uh, SD right for an interlocutory appeal, it's, it's this one. The entire securities bar is laughing. So I asked John Deaton, I said, John, who do you think these securities law lawyers are that are laughing? I don't know who the, here's what John says, I don't know who the sources are, but I imagine they might be the same ones that laughed at me and guaranteed Judge Torres wouldn't grant my request to file a motion to intervene, which she did. When I filed it and asked in the alternative to be granted amicus status, securities lawyers like Tenrero, Hinman and Clayton, all SEC guys, said I would never be successful, yet I was named amicus counsel in the most significant non-fraud SEC enforcement action in modern history with zero experience as a securities lawyer. Of course, Hinman is a career securities lawyer and was handpicked by Clayton to be director of corporate, corporate finance, but he testified under oath that the SEC doesn't have, have to prove or satisfy all of the Howey test factors, which is 100% wrong. So I'm not sure if it's the same lawyers laughing, but they can keep on laughing while I keep on winning. I like it. This is a uh, Ripple is doing swell in Dubai. They just opened uh, the thing for registration. The Middle East is one of the most important regions in the world for crypto. And Middle East just happens to be where all the petrodollar stuff arose. From payments to tokenization, there is a genuine adoption, and importantly, here in the UAE. By the way, does anybody remember, I do, the last days of the, of the uh, Trump administration? What did they do in the last days? This is something I've never forgotten. I remember Jared Kushner, Trump's son-in-law, who was best friends with Ken, um, oh, what's his name, Kirsten, who was on Ripple's board. I remember Jared Kushner getting off of a plane with the people from Israel and the UAE and they had the first piece in what 50 years and they were and I remember seeing that and then right after that uh, Biden was swept in and all the election mess and all that stuff but that was like one of the last things that was done in the Trump administration and Netanyahu was involved and I always remember seeing that and saying, now these people, you know, Israel's prob probably pretty much runs the U.S. I mean, they're the most, they say U.S. is the most powerful country in the world. I think Israel's probably the most powerful country in the world. But anyway, I remember seeing that and saying to myself, now, so you're telling me that these guys have been at war for freaking 50 years. Now they've got this peace, first time in 50 years. And Netanyahu just gonna let that just be thrown away, and then Netanyahu goes out of power, and now I think he's back now. I don't believe in coincidences, folks. Clear regulatory framework. That is why in Dubai is the perfect place to hold. And remember, don't forget this little thing because I did videos on it. Netanyahu just so happened, by pure coincidence, to be best buddies with Jared Kushner's family when Jared Kushner was a teenager. There were pictures of him kicking a soccer ball at Jared Kushner's middle school. And he would spend the night at Jared Kushner's family's home. 
and will swell global conference. I hope to see you there. Well, here it is. Dubai is where uh, Ripple's going to have it. That'll be interesting. Check the Brad Combs had a guy from the Digital Chamber of Commerce on, and there's a uh, interesting clip here. I'm going to play for you. Uh, I'm not going to play the second one, but I'm going to play this one because I've been saying this. How many times have you heard me say it? XRP is the only digital asset with legal, in all caps, clarity. Legal meaning it, it was uh, a decision by a judge or Congress passed a law. It's the only Bitcoin, they, they would have you believe Bitcoin has legal, legal clarity. It does not. And this guy's an attorney and, and confirms it for you right here. We were discussing, you know. With tons of pain in his voice. I hear people say in the same breath that Bitcoin and XRP having the only clarity going forward. And look, I tell people, I said this in an interview I did yesterday with James Murphy. I said it to you today. I'm going to say it to the audience again. I do not bring this up as a maxi. I bring this up as a concerned investor in this space. You know, he didn't know of any case that has legal clarity for Bitcoin outside of a regulatory opinion. Do, are you aware of anything that has no, a legal he's not. ruling he doesn't to want speak to, say to this, Bitcoin? But he does. We're really relying on that agency precedent, and which is coming through those agency statements. Uh, no, no. Let's think this through, folks. That we've been through this Ripple case. If we learned anything, it's that regulators. They, they, they lie and then they lie again and then they lie again throughout the entire case. It started as Bill Hen, it was his personal opinion. Once, they, once that was proven to be a lie, they changed it. Eventually, I think it became, it was the personal opinion of the division of corporate finance and that was a lie too. These people lie like it's their job. We, have, uh, we had Jay Clayton say that Bitcoin and Ethereum were not securities. And then you have Gensler come in and, and he won't say one way or another, leaving his options open. That alone should tell the Bitcoin people, wait a minute, we can't depend on, on the agencies. And their, I mean, to, tomorrow you could have a new, new administration come in and say, nope, Bitcoin's a security too. We've got this video that says uh, Homeland met with four Satoshis. And there you go. Boom. Blown, blown to bits. The CFTC has come out for, I think it was 2015 was the first time they said Bitcoin is a commodity. Um, the SEC chair has had statements where they've said Bitcoin is a commodity. And by the way, the, the fact, and it is a fact, that Homeland Security met with Satoshi and everybody's pretending like they don't know who Satoshi is and all that, that too has everything to do with the changeover of the financial system, the petrodollar and everything else, everything you're, it's like Elon Musk said, we ought to have a PSYOP of the month award because we've been living, you're gonna look back on this when you're 80 years old and you're gonna be like, man, I lived through years of PSYOPs and why wouldn't there be with this much on the line, folks? But it's not in law. Uh, it is not in law. And, you know, no matter how comfortable we can feel relying on that precedent, because it seems to be an accepted opinion that Bitcoin is a commodity, until it is in law, we shouldn't feel that comfortable, which I know I'm not trying to scare anyone out there, because, again, I think it seems to be accepted belief, but we need that to be ingrained in law. We need a statute that says Bitcoin and some of these other assets are commodities. And that's when we can feel comfortable about the regulatory framework going forward. I think. All right, and then um, this is kind of, I agree with Ashley Prosper. If you think this is, has a happy ending, you haven't been paying attention. My thoughts on Bitcoin and Ethereum. <clears throat> There's too many folks. I'm 49 years old. The reason I'm, I think me and maybe Digital Perspectives, Brad Combs are two of the, we're two of the old men in this game, okay? 49, he's I think 50 something. There's a reason that, we're two of the only people in social media that keep calling this out because how on earth do you think that you can proceed forward with all these lies and hidden things about Bitcoin and Ethereum? How can you possibly go forward and then claim, oh yeah, this is a, a transparent financial system? You can't. One way or another, truth always, just like the cream, cream always rises to the top, the truth always finds its way. 
somehow, some way. Um, and then I was just listening to this guy. I'm like, man, these guys are acting like they're fighting for all of crypto and all, and maybe they are. But I remember back when we were uncovering ETHgate, we were I was I was putting out tweets copying Perian boring in the chamber and blockchain association literally saying, "Where are you at, guys? Where are you? We we're out here fighting for the. Where are you?" They weren't anywhere to be found for at least a year. And I was throwing them, I was throwing them under the bus every chance I got because what they were doing was not right. Now, whatever their reasons are for now thinking it's, it's okay to come in. Maybe it's, maybe it's because they realized that they all were going to be attacked to Bitcoin or not Bitcoin, but Coinbase and all of them. But wow. I, and I do hope that the history books accurately re reflect. The people that changed the world was the XRP army, not all, not crypto all in general or Bitcoin max either. If the XRP army had not done what we did, this game looks completely different. The bad guys would have won. I'm not going to play this video, but I wanted to show it to you. Ripple tweeted out about um, Palau and the CBDC they're doing. It's a video and it shows you Palau. It's like a beautiful country. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family to put their big boy pants on or big girl pants on, whatever the case may be. Thanks for listening.